Welcome back everybody. This is the Shop Mini RC. I'm Ken and today we're going to look at overdrive gears in this guy. Actually, these are underdrive gears. We're going to talk a little bit about what the differences between underdrive and overdrive are, why you want it, and we're going to install them real quick. They're pretty simple. <laughs> What we've got here are some 112 underdrives. These are from Injora. There's a bunch of different companies, Triel, Mofo RC, a whole bunch of different companies that make underdrive and overdrive. The most popular seems to be the overdrive. Overdrive basically will make your wheels spin faster. So people looking to get a little bit extra speed, they'll usually run overdrive. Um, we're gonna run underdrive for a very specific reason, and I'll get there. So when you're doing overdrive or underdrive, you can do it in the front axle, the rear axle, or both. And you can get different percentages of underdrive and overdrive. So your stock gears, the stock worm gear, and uh, I guess it's kind of a pinion, they are two by 16, or two sixteenths. That's the ratio, two to 16. The next basically percentage of increased speed would be a two by 14. You could, there's probably a two by 15 out there. I'm not sure, but I know Injora has a two by 14 or two fourteenths. Um, basically that's gonna increase your speed by 14%. Uh, two by 13 is gonna be 23%, two by 12 is 33%, and uh, one by 12, which is what we've got here, is 33% slower. Okay, so you can increase by 14, 23, 33. That'll increase your speed, and then you can also go slower by 33%. Now, that's the Injoras. The MoFo percentages are different, and that may just be because of how they've got their worm gear set up um, compared to the teeth on here, right? Because if we count the teeth on here, got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 12 teeth. So it's a 12 tooth, but it's one to 12. And this guy here is labeled as a 112. So your worm gear will be different and that will change the percentages uh, based on the manufacturer and how, how they do it and how many rotations the worm gear has and whatnot. So either way, all those percentages I gave are in Jora's. Mofo has a 30% overdrive and then they have a 20% underdrive and 50% underdrive. So you could actually install a ring or a worm gear and a pinion or ring, however you want to look at it, a worm gear and ring that gives you 50% underdrive. And what that means is your car is going to move 50% slower. So you're going to have a really good slow crawl, okay? If you put it in both front and rear, that's also going to greatly increase your torque, like a lot. You're going to have a lot more torque, especially on like a stock motor. And that's one of the main reasons we're going to do it on this rig. So like I said, we're doing the Injoras. These are 33% underdrive, which means our wheels are going to spin 33% slower. And we're only going to do that in the rear. Okay. The reason we're going to only do that in the rear is because we want to have a differentiation between the wheel speeds. We want a differential, a wheel speed differential. And most of the time for crawlers, uh, it's beneficial to have faster fronts and slower rears. And now it doesn't matter if you're going to overdrive the front or underdrive the rear, so long as they're faster in the front, slower in the rear. So a lot of people like to go faster, um, so they put overdrive in. But what that's going to do is it's going to lower your torque. You're going to have less torque in the front because your gear ratio is making your wheel faster. So whenever you have a higher gear ratio that makes you faster, that means you have less torque. So being that we're keeping this little crazy rig here, uh, as as stock as possible because this really doesn't have a ton of ton of stuff on it it's a stock motor we do have an emax we could have left the stock steering or stock v1 electronics we did have the stock wheels and tires on here um, when we were trying to go ultra light and we might still end up going back to them the problem is these stock tires are just so bad but they are super light this rig with these wheels and tires including the brass and the brass um, diff cover here it was only 177 grams, so super light. But we wanted to try these uh, Endura pins, the mini pins, and get a little bit extra weight on there. These guys here are the OGRCs, um, they're deep dish, and this brought the rig from 177 up to like 280 or 270, somewhere in there. But it kept all the weight where we wanted it to be. So other than the wheels and tires, plus four axles, a little bit of wheel weights, and our brass uh, diff cover, it's stock in the Emax. We built this little servo tray. Anyway, it is not really about the rig, but the, the idea was that 
we're trying to keep the stock motor we're trying to keep it as light and uh nimble as possible and so we needed more torque we've got decent wheel speed um it just seems like it was kind of needing a little bit more torque so we figure we will reduce the speed in the rear and that'll help push us along better because we're gonna have lower torque in the rear and a little bit slower wheel speed which means the front will grab right the front's gonna pull you up over rocks it's gonna have a better easier time to pull and it's also gonna suck the rig down right so it's gonna help keep your chassis and body lower because the front is gonna pull right when I pull you can see pulling it causes it to suck down right now, if you're to, for some reason, put faster rears and slower fronts, you would do this. You would you would kind of arch arch over, right? You'd be, if this was your stock ride height, you'd arch over every time you went. So this is gonna cause it to suck down as we go. And for a dedicated crawler, it's super good. Another thing it does is it increases your turn radius. It doesn't actually increase the turn radius, but it causes it to pull. So your, your actual turn radius um, will increase. Your, your steering angle will not increase, right? You're just changing gears here. So it's not gonna increase your steering angle. That's still gonna be max whatever you've got it or whatever your endpoints are set to, but it will cause it to pull the rig around better because your rear is kind of slow and the front's gonna pull and you're gonna have a much better turn radius. Um, I've seen people and Bofo recommends their overdrive gears, their 30% overdrives, uh, because it kind of gives you freewheeling. If you know anything about the worm gears on SCX24, it's basically, they're kind of a drag break, right? Like that you can't roll, naturally roll the rig. It's all, it's gonna be stuck. And that's because worm gears are designed to go one way, essentially. But if you have a high enough ratio of overdrive in the worm gear, it will let it roll just uh, ever so slightly. And so a lot of people doing SCX24 monster truck builds, they want something a lot faster and they want that freewheeling. So they'll put overdrive gears in both axles and they're gonna be equal. You want them to be the same speed, but um, essentially overdrive gears in the axles will give you a little bit of freewheeling depending on how high overdrive you go. All right. So let me show you. It's got our tires marked here. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see very well on video, but I'll show you. You can see, see the C's are, see the C's, see the C's? They're marked in silver Sharpie. The C's are, the C, if you see the C's are super, super sweet and they're super marked in silver Sharpie. Anyway, so if we go ahead and just push it, you'll see they're gonna be spinning the same. They're always gonna be off the same. They're meeting in the middle, meet in the middle, meet in the middle, meet in the middle every time, right? Because they're the exact same ratio, meet in the middle, okay? Now, we're gonna go ahead and install our gears and then we'll show you the difference in speed there as well. Let me go ahead and also show some incline degrees and we'll see if it changes that. I think we might have some issues with the incline uh, the degree of incline just because of weight. So they might not end up changing that much, but on rocks, it's definitely going to perform different when you've got the ability to pull. It's going to pull you over any sort of crests uh, much better. And then we're also going to do, I'll show you the turn radius, essentially how, how sharp it turns. So let's go ahead and get this installed and then I'll show you all that. So all you really got to do is pull off one of your steering links so that you can get to your diff cover. Pull off your diff cover. Except I totally lied because we're not doing overdrives. <laughs> we have overdrive in other rigs, so I'm just so used to doing overdrives. This is actually the first time we've ever done underdrives in the rear. So let me put this back together and then we're going to do the rear. But you, if you're going to do overdrives, which a lot of people do, especially when they've got more powerful motors or the brushless setups, um, you definitely can just do the overdrive in the front. And, uh, yeah, it's a good way to get a little bit extra speed. You basically don't lose speed, right? Because your rear is still going to go the same speed, but your front's now going to have that extra pull, so you're not going to lose any kind of speed. All right, so this will be easier. We're just going to pull this diff cover on the back off, and we'll show you. Why am I using this tool? I should be using my electric one. This thing's in the description. I talk about it all the time, but it's so sweet. It's like 25 bucks. All right. So now you can see how the ring and the worm gear naturally sit in there. Your diff cover and your bearing. Now's a good time to check your bearing maybe lube it up with some bearing oil or something in there 
Um, you also want to check your O-rings. There's two little tiny O-rings on each side, and I'll show you those once we get those out. We're also going to have to pull off our drive shaft, and we're going to have to be able to pull our axles out because the axles sit into your uh, ring, essentially. So we're going to get that all apart. I'm not going to show it, and uh, we'll come back when we can get everything out. Once you pulled your drive shaft off and you pulled your worm gear out, um, there's a bearing on each side, just so you know, and like I said, an O-ring on each side. And you've got just your pinion. You can feel uh, if you've got any binding. It's a good time to kind of just feel it. Check your bearings. Make sure everything feels real smooth because you can't normally do this. So um, you can see we've got a little bit of a bent axle here. We had a big tumble. So you can really see it. But it's okay. Again, this guy's going slow. If you're going, if, you're, if your rig's a go fast rig, that's a problem. But we're good. We're going slow. So we're going to get our wheels and tires off. And then we're going to pull out this uh, ring. And then you've got to be able to get the axles out. So if you're doing the front, you would have to pull your knuckles off. You actually probably wouldn't even need to uh, pull your wheels and tires off on the front. You could just unscrew the top two on the knuckles. And actually, that means you don't even have to undo this. Just undo your knuckles, pop this off, undo your knuckles, pop it off. Um, if you're having issues, then you might want to pull off one side of the steering links and you can just pull the knuckles straight off. But then you can get your, your uh, axle shafts out. Um, so, But here on the rears, you essentially have these tiny Phillips heads and those are holding the bearing in, and that bearing is holding the axle shaft in. So we're going to go ahead and pull these out. And then you actually probably don't have to unscrew these the whole way. Maybe even just unscrew just one of them. Let's see. Nope, you're good to go. Okay. Don't want to lose our little axle shaft pin in there that holds our hex on. Okay, now this can pull right out. And the bearings can stay in there. You want to just kind of pull one out, just check it. Everything felt good, so we should be good. You can also see if there's any wear on there. They look pretty good. These brass ones do wear down pretty quickly. Um, if quickly, I'll put that in quotes. If you're running hard or you've got a brushless system or you're you know you're high speeding a lot, they will get wear on them. And you can see there's two tiny little O-rings. Okay, and those do need to be there or you're gonna have a lot of slop. And you can see here your new set comes with a new set of o-rings actually comes with two so you got backups in case they break or they get worn sometimes if you have issues and you have binding and you can't figure it out sometimes one of these o-rings have broken and they keep getting stuck in between your uh, your gears essentially you can also see these these are much beefier i mean they're they're bigger so um they're probably gonna last a lot longer but they're pretty cool i dig that Throw this guy in. Get our axle shaft back in there. You might have to lift on it a little bit just to get it to kind of sit into the slot. There we go. Nice and snug. Tighten these back down. Don't over tighten these. If you do, you could kind of bind on your, your bearings. Always make sure you test things as you go. Screw in one side, make sure it's still smooth. Screw in the other side, make sure it's still smooth. Beautiful. And now we'll go ahead and add our bearing to the rear. Slide that guy in. And then we'll go ahead and slide. Oh, we need to oil it. You do want to put some sort of oil in there, some sort of lube, just a little bit. We're just we just use um we use this a lot. It's just like a general purpose sewing machine oil. You can put diff lube in there, whatever you want. Just you, you don't want it to run. You can use bearing lube, really. You just don't want it to be like super dry. We're just gonna put a little in there. Warp 
it around a little. Put it like this. Just get a little bit on each tooth, each section, just a little bit. All right, that's fine. All right, plenty of lube. Put our diff cover back on. Make sure you line up your bearing. Make sure before you even tighten it, you just kind of test. Does it feel like it's stuck? Is it spinning nice and smooth? And it feels fine. And we're checking your bearings, essentially. Yep, we're good. We're going to get these guys back in, and we'll be back. Right, one thing I'd like to point out when you're putting your diff cover back on, especially if you've got like an aftermarket diff, a brass one or aluminum diff, something like that, um, make sure you don't over tighten those diff cover screws because if you do they can pull your diff in and you'll get a lot of binding they'll basically crush the the bearings in there or your shaft is going to end up pushing against your diff cover or up against the housing of the axle too too much it's gonna be just too tight and they're gonna have binding so if you notice binding after you put your diff cover on just back your screws off just like a half turn and uh, it should loosen it up pretty well especially these these two middle ones and the two top ones all right, before we put our top, uh, our rear truss on, I'm gonna go ahead and put our drive shaft back together. And if you don't know about phasing, you definitely wanna phase your drive shaft. It's simple, simple. Basically just make sure your ears of your drive shaft center shafts are in line with each other. This will help prevent uh, vibration and things of that nature at high speed. So you can see like this, I've got this ear here on top and then the ears here are on the side on the inner shaft and then the outer shafts, this one's on top and these are on the side, that's not good. Uh, you want them to be in line with each other. Boom, boom. And then also another way to tell is your screws are facing the same direction, right? Screws on the bottom, screws on the bottom or facing, you know, facing us, screw facing us, screw facing us. That means they're gonna be in phase. All right, so once they're in phase, we'll go ahead and throw our rear truss back on and get our screws in. All right, nice. Still feels smooth. We're going to plug it in real quick. And uh, just make sure everything feels right. All right, let's get our wheels and tires on. These go on a certain side. We don't want to put them on the wrong side because they're marked for direction. We have flubber stuffers in there and those are directional. Also, we've got our C's marked on only one side. So we know that the C goes on this side. Flubber stuffers are super awesome. Uh, with the Flubber C slime balls, they have rebranded. And yeah, the Flubber C slime balls, they're just, if you don't know about them, search our channel we've got a couple videos about them and they are sweet they basically help give you you know your conforming over tires your ability to have your tires kind of conform um, but then also give you tons of side healing uh, basically side wall strength for side healing so you don't just fold like it's actually got a lot of rigidity in there anyway that's another video And as always, when you're putting your wheels and tires back on, don't over tighten those. Uh, you'll basically push up against your bearings and it'll cause binding. You want to have just the tiniest bit of play in there. We really don't have much play, but you can see that I can basically blow on them and they'll move, right? Anyway, you get the point. They are super, super loose, so, um, but we don't have side to side play, so that's good. Over tightening them was a quick way to burn up a motor. All right. Nice. Okay, let's see if you can see the difference between the C's. So they're met in the middle right now. Let's see if this one is faster. Oh, definitely. Look at that. It's already caught up. Huge difference in speed. Look at that. 
Let's see if we can get into the same. There we go, same. Oh, back it up. Look at that. It's already ahead. All right, same. And there you go. Back to where we started, and we're only there. Pretty sweet. All right, let's get it on the uh, on the angle board and our turn radius. We'll do the turn radius first, then the angle board. And then here we'll go ahead and do a max turn radius. And we'll go ahead and mark that with a tire. All right, here you go. You can see where we previously landed. We haven't changed anything on the truck except those gears, and wow, that is more than I expected. That is insane, guys. So here we are at 54, 55, we'll call it 54, and this is the stock gears. Here we'll do 55, 56. Alright, let's do a little more. 56, 57. Right. I think a lot of it has to do with uh, this rig being super light. Again, this guy is right around 270 grams, so super, super light. So previously our max was like 57. That was kind of our max, and we kind of couldn't do that without it touching it. You know, kind of, it just kept sliding down. So we're going to do 56, 57 here which is basically where we left off. I think we were maybe 57, 58, but let's go ahead and give it a look. Oh, look at that, do you see that? It kind of squats, look at that. It's kind of squatting down. We'll take a better look at that on the bench. You just need more grip, more weight. I'm not sure if I'm the biggest fan of these little pins. I feel like they just don't get enough grip. I like. The OGRC pins have much bigger lugs. I think they grab a little better, but this gets going. That's that's pretty good. All right, a little bit of hop in there. Remember, we did lose a little bit of wheel speed. Our rear wheels are slower. So, all right, let's go ahead and crank it up one more degree. Or two or three, 59. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I 
can see it wants to go. If we could just stop the, look at that. And that's 59.60. And I think these tires just need more grip. Also, you're not usually going up a, a hill like this. You kind of got, you know, crests and angles and it's just going to work a lot better. I know this is cheating by touching it, but I'm just curious. Like, it's going to just go, right? Like, I'm barely touching it. I'm not even really touching it right now. Yeah, we'll slow it down. It does make the V1 electronics and that stock motor a lot smoother because you're, you're, you're slower, right? Like, you're actually going slower. So you have better throttle control for sure. There we go. Look at that. Look how slow it's going. Stock motor, stock V1s. All right. Anyway. So that's pretty amazing, um, that difference, especially in the turn radius, right? Like the turn radius is just nuts. That's a huge difference. And like I said, if you're gonna have like a, a body on here and you're a little bit heavier rig, you're definitely gonna see it squat more when you when you go forward. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it here. Kind of. You can definitely see it hunch when you go backwards. See how it hunches up as you go in reverse, it's hunching. But then forward, it kind of squats it down. Yeah, we'll see if we can get a little bit wider angle, better view. Look at it tuck, it definitely pushes down. So that's pretty neat. Definitely makes it handle a lot better on the rocks when it's tucking down like that. Well, I hope you learned something off this video. Um, again, it's a pretty simple concept, but some people, I've seen a lot of questions about it, so I figured we might as well do a video since we're gonna install that on this guy. Um, if you wanna know more about this, tell me in the comments below. Maybe we'll do a video just talking about the principles behind kind of a comp rig kind of thing and what we're doing with this comp rig. It's class three. It's basically anything goes. Um, got everything on the axle. So I'm just do battery on axle. We actually got the battery and the ESC. You can even have motor on axle. Anyway, we'll, we can talk about that in another video. If you're interested, put it in the comments below. Um, otherwise, why don't we uh, put it in the comments below if you've watched the whole video. Why don't you put worm food? Because it's worm gear. And this thing's going to eat it up. It's going to tear up those rocks. So that's pretty sweet. And uh, also, make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell. All the typical things, guys. I was looking at some stats the other day and like 70% of my view hours 
our non-subscribers. So I appreciate y'all watching, but you gotta subscribe. We've got contests coming. We've got contests going right now. You just gotta look, you gotta know what videos are. I'm not gonna tell you if you don't watch, but if you subscribe, you'll know. Uh, we're giving away a chassis and you know, all kinds of stuff. So anyway, like, subscribe. Those are important. Hit the bell so you know when new videos go up and uh, yeah, get out there, build something awesome, upgrade your rigs. These little gears, they're like 10 to 20 bucks, depending on who you get them from. And the turn radius alone, I think it's worth it. So until next time, crash them, smash them, and bash them, but don't break the expense.